Okay, uh, in this video we'll take a look at a uh, design of a complete sequential system. We'll start with a problem description. Look at the state diagram. Create a state encoding. Choose a state encoding and select flip-flops. We'll create a next state table. From that next state table we'll derive the next state logic and the output logic. Using that we'll create a sequential circuit. And after we've created the sequential circuit, We'll look at the different paths and decide what the timing parameters, such as the uh, setup time constraint, which decides the clock period and the hold constraints. And then finally, we'll look at how we might generate that needed clock frequency. Okay, so let's start a description of a uh, with a description of a problem. A coffee machine operates uh, after you've inserted 75 cents. Uh, the input goes it accepts is only quarters just to simplify the logic uh, one coin at a time when the total of 75 cents is received in the machine the machine allows you to uh, brews a single cup of coffee and dispenses that as the output okay. so let's start by describing the different states we might need so let's call our states s0 s1 s2 and s3 S0 is when no coin in, is in the system. S1, S2, and S3 are 25, 50, and 75 cents total in the system at any given time. So based on that, let's draw our state diagram. So here's our state S0, and the output 0 is for the coffee. Uh, that means the coffee is not dispensed in that state. Uh, as state S1, state S2, that means we have 50 cents in that if we're ever in that state. And when I when we're in state S3, we have 75 cents, so the output coffee should be dispensed. Now let's start at state S0 and look at the state transitions. When the input is 1, that means 25 cents is added, we go to S1. If not, we stay in S0. When we're in S1, we stay in S0 if there's no coin added. Uh, when we're in S1, we go to S2 if a coin is added. So we have a total of 50 cents right now if we're in S2. In S2, if we have a coin added, we go to S3, that's 75 cents, we brew a coffee and dispense it as the output. If we are in S2 and we receive no coins, we just sit there waiting for it. And once we're in S3, the coffee has been brewed, so the machine should go back to its initial state and wait for another person to start entering the coin. So regardless of what you enter, whether somebody enters a coin or not when you're in S3 on the next edge of the clock the machine immediately goes from S3 to S0 okay. so here's our state diagram now this is a Moore machine because the output here depends uh, only on the current state and is independent of the input uh, so the output change happens when uh, it's in a particular state in this case S3 now we need to decide on the state encoding so let's choose a binary state encoding which would require a total of two flip-flops. If we chose another popular encoding called the one-hot encoding, in this case there are four states, we would need four flip-flops. So it, we'll do this exercise by choosing the binary encoding. Uh, right. So here's the next state table or an outline of it. We have the current state. We have the current state right here. We have input equals 0 and input equal 1, which decide what the next state should be. And here we have the output. And we've decided to use JK flip-flops as our, as our uh, flip-flop source or flip-flop for the circuit. And we'll fill out what the input and the outputs will be. So filling the next state portion, this portion of the table, uh, is basically looking at the state diagram and translating this state diagram. So for instance, if I'm in current state 0, 0, which is S0, so this is S0, so this S1 is S1 is 0, 1, S2, S2 is uh, 1, 0, so S2 is 1, 0, and S3 is 1, 1. So when I'm on these states, if I'm in 0, 0, the next state when input equals 0 should be 0, 0. When input equals 1, it should be 0, 1. So using that, I can fill that table out. So I fill both the input equals 0 and then the input equals 1. 
and all this is filled is based on our uh, state transitions here. Uh, now let's look at the output. Output is a one only in this state when S3. So output is a one only there. So we'll fill that out. So we have the state table filled out completely based on the information that's presented in the state transition diagram. Now we need to figure out the combinational logic, which is this portion. We need to figure out how do we go from this particular current state to these next states in when input is equal to 0 or input is equal to 1. So we need to figure out what the logic is at the J and the K inputs of the two flip-flops. For that, let's take a quick look at the uh, truth table of JK flip flop. And using that truth table, we can now start filling out this table. In order to simplify that task, let's do a quick exercise right here. Uh, we have Q, which is the current state. So, so this is the current state right here. This is the current state, and this is the next state. So if I list all possible combinations of current and next states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then this table is this table is independent of this particular state diagram so this is just for a general jk flip flop current state to next state if my current state is a zero and my next state is a zero that means my next state is equal to my previous state so that's this line right here on the jk flip flop and my next state can be set to a zero in this so i have two options for this particular row where my current state is zero and my next state is zero that means I can accomplish this by setting J to be a zero. So here's a zero and here's a zero. So let me put a zero here. And I can accomplish the same thing by either putting K equals zero, which would make Q next equals Q previous, or by setting K equals one, which would set Q next to a zero. So in this case, I can have K either zero or a one. So we'll, we'll show that by putting a don't care. Similarly, when I go from current state 0 to a next state of 1, 0 to a 1, I'm saying my next state is opposite of Q previous, or I'm saying I can set that by putting a 1 at the output Q next. So that I can accomplish by putting a 1 on J, and I don't care on K. Similarly, going from a 1 to 0, can be accomplished by doing Q not Q previous and 0 Q next, in which case J is a don't care and K is equal to a 1. And finally, going from 1 to a 1 is Q previous or this. So J is again a don't care and K, K is equal to a zero in this case okay. alright so now we have filled this out for a generic current state to a next state so we can basically now just look at what Q1 is what Q1 next is under input equals zero and fill out the values of J1 and K1 so let's do that so zero 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 gives me uh, zero zero gives me this right here so that'll be zero this will be a x zero zero again zero zero again gives me zero x one to a one is x zero one to a zero is x one Oops. Now let's take a look at Q0 right here. Q0 next under input equals 0 and fill these out. J0s and the K0s out. So in this case, we have 0 going to 0. So that's going to be a 0 with an X. 1 going to a 1, so that's going to be x0 1 going to a, sorry, 0 going to a 0 0 x 
and we have a 1 going to a 0, so that should be x1. Now let's take a look at q1 right here and q1 next under input equals 1 so we'll look at input equals 1 and that will decide what j1 and k1 are and if we look at 0 in 0 so that's again 0x 0 to 1 is 1x 1 to 1 is x0 1 to a 0 is x1 now we'll look at q0 again and q0 next and fill these out j0 and k0 out so that will be 1x mm, because I'm going from 0 to a 1 I'm going from 1 to a 0 so that's going to be x1 I'm going from a 0 to a 1, so again 1x. And I'm going from a 0 to a 0. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm going from a 1 to a 0, so that'll be x1 again. Okay. Now, based on this table, so we fill out the complete next day table. So we've completed the next day table. Now, you can use Boolean expression simplification or you can use k-maps to compute the Boolean expression for j1, k1, j0, and k0. Now these, uh, this table seems relatively simple. For instance, j0, look at j0, I'm looking at j0 right here. j0 is a 1 or don't care whenever input is equal to 1. And j0 is 0 or don't care when input equals 0. So that basically tells me that the simplest expression for j0 is j0 equals in 0. Oh, sorry, input. j0 is equal to input. It also tells me k0 is input equals 1 but k0 is also 1 under these cases right here input or whenever q1 is 1 right? j1 J1 is a 1. J1 is a 1. Uh, whenever I have input equals 1. And input equals 1. And uh, let's see. Q0 is a 1. And K1 equals 1 in both, uh, let's see, here and here. So K1 is equal to a 1 whenever q0 is equal to a 1. So k1 equals 1, q0 is 1, and here's a don't care, don't care, a 1. So these are my Boolean expressions. And my output is simply q1 ended with q0. Because it's a 1 from q1 and q0 so we have so far the boolean expressions for uh, all the j's and the k values so next we need to draw the circuit based on these equations